Hey friends, so let's say you got a sport fishing boat and you're thinking to yourself, you know what? It'd be really cool if we could sell some of those fish that we catch. That's what we were thinking. And so that's what we did. We became a commercial fishing boat so we could sell our bluefin, our big eyes, our yellow fins, our mahis all year long. But we wanted you to know what's the journey been like for us specifically in terms of cost because, Professor, it hadn't been free or easy, has it? No, it has not. <laughs> it has it not. not. I was stressing. It was stressful, but you're going to hear all about it in this video. So Professor, when you talk about commercial boat expenses, one of the first things we had to do was add this life raft here. So go ahead and just give us some of the general details of why we chose this one. Well, this is a Solus A life raft and uh, they, they have several different classifications, but the Solus A means that the packing uh, supplies on the inside, like as far as water, and uh, I guess all your stuff that you would ever need, yep. you know, if you were to have to spend time in this life raft. That's in here. That's in here, yeah. That's cool. And it, it's made to spend, you know, like days in, not just overnight or hours, you know what I mean? So there's supplies in here to hold you for a while. And um, of course we had to mount this in a position to where it would operate correctly, not get hung up if the boat ever went down. And- um, We it, actually chose it down here versus up on the tower too, because we were afraid that that would potentially affect the, the ability of the radar, correct? Correct, and it deploying uh, with the to be able to do its thing. hydrostatic release and not being hung up on anything. Yeah, and it could easily get hung up up there, and so at that point, what's the purpose to it? Right. Now this was used, it was so used. it cost us $2,500, but new could easily cost well above four thousand dollars probably more like six yeah, yeah like six okay and this is eight person uh that way if you're thinking about like a charter situation you've got the crew two people you got a six person charter potentially eight people total and we're gonna have to because it's one year and you got to get another inspection we're gonna be spending 500 to a thousand a year roughly just depends yeah. on, on to have this repacked whatever. You know? gotta be repacked each yeah. time. And when you buy these brand new, it comes two years. But every year after that, it has to be repacked. Repacked, yeah. okay. All right, so we've looked at the life raft, Professor, and now let's continue to look at other safety items. There's a huge list here. Huge You've list. got your trusty pad. <laughs> so start breaking it down. Let's look at the different items that we had to get to get our commercial fishing license. and. We'll talk about the cost of each one of those items. Okay, so the first thing on the list was uh, immersion suits. Immersion suits, otherwise known as survival suits. We got a video on that, by the way. Pretty silly one of me trying to put it on offshore, right? Not easy to do. Those were, we had to get six because we wanted one for everybody on the crew. So it's that one for every soul on the boat, every soul on the boat. That's right, that's exactly right. Okay, and so, we were looking at a minimum four to $500 for those. We'll call them 500 per suit. That's $3,000 raise. All right, so that's the first one on our list. Then we had to have the offshore life jackets and each survival suit and life jacket has to have a light attached to it. Ah, uh, yes. So we had to have lights. I think we spent $100 on lights for those things. Yep. Do you, you know what the life jackets cost? Because it's not your like typical life jacket. These are the offshore life jackets. They got the deflectors and all that on them. I yeah. mean, they were about 60 bucks a piece. About $60 a piece and we have- We have- uh, Eight of those? Eight of those, $480, cha-ching. All right, what's next, Professor? Uh, so we also need an offshore flare, aerial flare, uh, handheld flare and smoke kit, which was about 350 bucks. Flares, smoke kits, $350 added to the list. All right, what we got next? Uh, next uh, piece of emergency equipment was an E-PERB. Um, E-PERB, lo yeah. uh, locate you anywhere That's in right. the world tool. Anywhere in the world. And what was messed up about this one, Professor, is we had one previously, but it didn't have that hydrostatic release valve. And so 
We got one now with the hydrostatic release valve. That was what five six hundred bucks. Yep, and it also has to be registered along with the boat. So uh, yeah. when the the beacon uh, ignites and sends a signal, it it's boat specific. So boat specific, you got to know six hundred dollars on the list. Let's keep going. All right, so we had to have fire extinguishers. We had to have three of those. B uh, five Bs and five Bs, yeah. three extinguishers, and I think they're about a hundred dollars a piece. That's weren't right. Three hundred dollars. <laughs> on the list All keep right. going professor so we also had to have a secondary means of means of communication which ah. um that could be a satellite phone me myself i use a little texting device where you could it also has an sos button on it it's pretty much a secondary e-verb it's a personal locator be beacon you can communicate send text email stuff like that so that was my secondary i pay sixty dollars a month for that unlimited texting sixty dollars a month added to the list chain all right what's next professor? all right so we had to have uh an array of different paper goods um like placards you know oh, yes. it's explaining that you can't discharge oil overboard safety um protocols how to call mayday gets an array of those um they were fairly inexpensive yeah, yeah. not not that i think all in, I think we're about 15, 20 bucks on those. We'll call it $20 because of inflation. Yeah. All right, 20 bucks for those. Uh, we had to have a, a first aid kit, which was like 40 bucks. Nothing special on that. Just, you know, your basic uh, Tylenol, Band-Aids, you know, antiseptic yep. and stuff like that. Yeah, first aid kit, $40 on the list. Yeah. So um, that's pretty much sums it up for the safety equipment. Right. Um, one other thing that we had to have that was required for the commercial license side of it was we had to have a three hour backup power source. And uh, what I used for that was a jump pack. You can essentially hook that to the bus bars in your yeah. panel and uh, provide three hours of uh, 12 volt you know, power to everything. I'd want to have that anyway. Yeah. I mean, no matter what, but yeah. that was not cheap. No, it was about the unit I have is about 600 bucks and it's very versatile. It'll actually jump start one of our diesel engines if we ever need to yeah. or anything like that. So, $600 on the list. Let's keep going, Professor. Okay, we talked about the safety equipment. Now, what are we going to transition to? Well, we're going to transition to the, as far as the the permits and how the boat has permits, to be set up. licenses, yeah. certifications, yeah. lots of stuff here. And this paperwork, I can recall, drove you crazy, yeah, Professor. I'm not a paperwork person. <laughs> All right. so. All right. so, what are some of the things that we had to get? So, right off the bat, we had to get a fishery endorsement uh, on our documentation. Uh, well, that's pretty much just registering with the Coast Guard, saying that we're going to be commercial fishing. Uh, the fee on that was minimum. I think it was like, um, you remember how much that was? It, it, wasn't, it wasn't much. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll find out. We'll put it on there. We'll yeah. call it 50 bucks right now. $50. Right. So then we had to get a federal fisheries permit, um, which the, the one that we have is an Atlantic HMS charter head boat. And then we have the charter head boat commercial sale endorsement. So that permit with NOAA allows us to charter fish when we're charter fishing. But if we want a commercial fish, we also can sell our fish. We just can't intermingle the two or yes. anything like that. Yeah. All so, right, cool. We got a cost on that? Uh, 26 bucks. $26. Very All right. expensive. All right, thank you. 26 That Finally, something not so inflated. Right. So the next license that we have to have was more expensive, and that was actually a land or sell permit from the North Carolina Division of Marine Fisheries. And uh, that allows us to land our catch and take it back to the dock and sell it. And that's state oriented. Okay. So that costs 400 bucks. 400, oh, North Carolina killing me small. All right, $400 for that per state. So that's gonna vary if you're going up and down. So if we were to fish out of Virginia, we'd have to get a land and sell permit for Virginia. Correct. Yeah. Okay, all right, got it. So then we had to get an FCC license. And um, that just pretty much is a license saying that you're certified to operate the VHF radios on the boat. And uh, it's just a questionnaire you have to fill out, enter your boat information, 220 bucks. $220, add it to the list. Yeah. All right, so um, some more additional things we had to do to the boat was we had to display our official numbers on the port and starboard side and on it in an aerial position uh, on top of the boat so it can be viewed from the air. 
and uh, that was, you know, two hundred bucks we had to pay the, the lady Shannon Matthews yep, there. Yep. Um, Matthews Trading Company. She hooked us up. She's done all of our lettering for us and everything else like that. So she she made up our numbers and put them on the boards that I made up. So, so that was two hundred dollars. Yep. Keep going. All right. So another thing that we had to have was somebody on the boat has to be certified in first aid and CPR. Oh yeah. So um, safety, safety. Yep. Yeah, when I got my captain's license. And that was all included in the course. Um, so we lucked out there. I was already certified. Nobody had to go take any extra classes. But. Yeah, so speaking of captain's licenses, how much time and money was that? Well, I, the particular route that I went, I took the five week class was during the evenings and on Saturdays on the weekends, uh, just so I could work and I wouldn't lose any time from work. It was very tough. It cost about $1,500. But I learned a lot in that class and it was well worth it. I'm glad I did. Well worth it, but $1,500 added to the list. So we also have to have some other paper goods on the boat or digital copies of them somehow or another. Like you're supposed to have a hard chart of, and a chart being a map, if you're not, if you're not familiar with what a chart is, yeah. of the areas that you're gonna be fishing in. Yeah. Like we fish out of North Carolina, so we had to have a, you know, North Carolina chart. Right. You also gotta have uh, a book called The Light List, and um, they're easy to get online. It just tells you what display of lights different boats have. Um, it's just like a quick reference guide of things that you would learn in the captain's license class. Okay. You had to have a copy of the Coast Pilot which is the different um, up and down the coast, you know, the different channels, canals, stuff like that. Um, and the rules of the road handbook, mm -hmm. you know, just read on right and return. You know, it, it's, it's a lot more to, to it than that, but you know, it's a requirement to have. And I had a copy of that from when I took my captain's license. Yep. But, so another thing that this is pretty important too, is um, you had to have alcohol test kits on the boat. And, um, so if anyone gets hurt, um, the captain or the mate, that's the first thing they're supposed to administer is just test that there's a presence for alcohol. Are they hammered or not? Right, <laughs> and it doesn't, it doesn't give you a, uh, like a reading of your blood alcohol content. It just tells, tells you whether there was alcohol, mm -hmm. uh, you know, predominant. Liability that's purposes right. yep. here, okay. Yeah, so after we gathered everything that, we thought we needed, we had to have a dockside inspection. Mm -hmm. So a member of the United States Coast Guard came out here and he went through all of our safety gear and checklist. He did a great job. He did a great job. He educated me a lot on a lot of things I didn't know. He helped me out on a lot of things. He put a lot of effort in it prior to my inspection date to help me get prepared. And he didn't get paid for that. He didn't get paid for that. He just did it because he cared. Yeah. Showed us how to use our survival suits. That's right. Really gave us a rundown on the life raft. Yeah. I mean, good dude. Real good dude. We appreciate the Coast Guard peeps. Yeah. Just, you know, it's just, just good people. Lots of good people in this industry. That it is. That pretty much sums it up what we needed, you know. And for... all those things just now were probably about another hundred bucks. Easily, yeah. Uh, insurance on the boat itself, yeah. we're probably talking, I think at least a few thousand costs that we've had. Yeah, and our insurance is a lot more too because we're gonna be running charters. So. Yep, yep, yeah, not cheap at all. Professor, anything else that we need to add to this list? I'm sure, you know, again, your situation is gonna depend. We wanted to get you a feel of what we have spent and all the, just all the checklist items that we've had in order to take this boat and just go from fishing to commercial fishing. Anything else, Professor? Well, the most helpful tool that I found for the commercial fishing side of it, there's a, a website and it has, um, you enter your boat information into it and it, it lets you know what you've got to have specific to your application for commercial fishing. Super nice, yeah. right? Just you input your info, it spits out your requirements. Yeah. Very simple and easy. What's the URL? www.fishsafewest.info. Fishsafewest.info. All right, we're gonna put it up on the screen. That about covers it. It's been a fun journey. It's been a learning experience about drove this man crazy, all the paperwork, <laughs> like he said. 
but we got through it and now we're able to sell the fish, which is great, right? Because this summer when we're just out there making great videos, catching a ton of fish, just loading up the boat, we're gonna be able to take some back. You're gonna be a part of those experiences. As always, make sure you like the video, please like it, subscribe to the channel as well, share it with the world, your voice matters, your being a part of the community matters, and until next time, my friends, stay salty.